In this video we are going to add some transitions to our state machine that can easily be triggered from any other state, recreating the any state transition from the Unity animator. We are also going to add some basic functions so the states aren't just empty, meaningless classes. All our states inherit from our base class, simply called state. So far that was useful because our state machine can refer to any child state by the base class and call the functions, knowing that every child class has them as well. We overwrite them because they are empty and every child class wants to do something different with it. But let's add some functionality in the base class. I think a good example for something that all states should be concerned about is whether or not the child has just died. Dying is a state as well. It might have some animations like turning into an angel and fly to heaven and some backend stuff like removing the cultist object from the game. So let's make a new class called state die and let it inherit from state instead of mono behavior. The conditions for entering the state is when the cultist health goes below zero. The reason why that happens doesn't matter to our state. Maybe the cultist was sick and lost his final health while sleeping, or maybe he was working and it's a work accident. It doesn't matter. When the health is below zero, the cultist dies. Let's add a public float called health to the cultist class and a function called change health. For testing purposes, this function will be triggered when hitting space. In our base class, we now check if the health is below zero, and if so, it's time to die. Right now that doesn't do anything, even if we call it in the child class. The rest of the function is still running and returns type of state idle. So we actually need to read that value and do something with it. The easiest way is to save it in a variable and check if it isn't null. If it isn't, we explicitly tell our function to use that as our return value. Now the base function is going to return either null or a type of state die, if the cultist is indeed dead. To use the new state, the cultist will need to create an instance of it and add it in the state machine's dictionary. Let's try this out by going to play mode and hit the spacebar a few times so the cultist should eventually have less than zero health and die. We can do more complex things in the base class as well. Let's go a tiny step further by adding a timer. This is pretty handy when you don't want to check every frame. For example, the cultist should check regularly if he's hungry and if so, enter the eat state. I don't think it's necessary to do that every frame. Instead, we just check for it maybe every two seconds. That's still often enough so that a cultist won't go from hungry to dying of starvation before checking for food. But assuming our game runs at 60 frames a second, the functions are called 120 times less. And of course the check whether the cultist is alive should occur before, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. Let's ignore that there isn't any food in the game yet. The cultist eats for 3 seconds and then takes a nap. We should of course check if maybe the cultist is dying while eating. Note that we are also checking if he is hungry and the base state will at some point return that but we are already in the eat state and therefore won't enter again. Keep in mind the state machine only triggers a transition if the states are different, so enter state won't be called again.
Now let's add a sleep state. Inherit from state, add a constructor and add the system library to be able to use types. And of course we want to check whether the cultist is dying. But maybe you don't want him to get up in the middle of his nap to check for food again. So instead of just checking if the base state returns null, which means going through the entire hierarchy, let's just check for a specific return type, which is state die. Back in our eat state, we will return the type of state eat until the timer runs out, in which case we return type sleep. In the sleep state we will reduce the health, because for testing purposes let's just say the food was poisoned. And as always, the cultist needs to tell the state machine to create an instance of state sleep and add it in the dictionary of possible states. In the enter function of the base state, I set the eat check timer to 2, but that function isn't called because when the state machine starts off in the idle state as the default state, it isn't calling enter state. So let's add that. Time to test it all out. The cultist starts in the idle state and the base state will trigger a switch to the eat state. After 3 seconds in the eat state the cultist will take a nap but the food was poison and the sleep state actually reduces the health really badly so the cultist dies. As you can see the cultist just died in his sleep and that concludes our tutorial. In the next one we will work more on the cultist class and lay the groundwork for implementing the safe system. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and of course let me know if you have any questions or suggestions.